Recording audio to accompany the PowerPoint presentation is much simpler than it appears at first. Audio narration can be recorded in multiple sessions, slides can be recorded one at a time, and the audio can be revised at any time. You should perform all recording sessions directly on the PC and not on a flash, thumb, or removable USB drive. There are reported bugs with the recording process not working properly when recording to a flash drive. Many of the interface icons and controls are context sensitive. This means that they will not appear active until they are needed. For example, the play button will not be active until there is something to play. After you record a message, the buttons that operate on that message become available. So you can't edit or save anything until you first record it. Locate the Adobe Presenter tab in the ribbon. This is the audio section of the ribbon. First, we will set the microphone recording level. Select Record in the audio part of the menu. I am setting my microphone recording level for use with Adobe Presenter. Once the levels have been adjusted properly, the input level display will turn green. Click OK. Let's take a look at the main controls. This is the record button. This is the play button. It will become active after you've recorded something to play back. These buttons will take you to the next slide or the previous slide. Now to keep things simple, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do and then I will do it. This way I will not end up recording my own directions. First of all, I will record a message on slide two. Then I will advance to slide three. Slide three has three animations of text that bounce in when I press the space bar. This is the play presentation button. I click the space bar, the first one bounces in, the second one bounces in, and the third one bounces in. I will click to play the animation and then record a message to go with each animation. Pressing the escape key, I can return Okay, now let's record our first slide on slide two. Click on the record button. I am setting my microphone recording level for use with Adobe Presenter. I'm gonna press record. Organizational behavior is the study of what people think, feel, and do in and around organizations. Organizations are groups of people who work interdependently towards some purpose. They are collective entities with a collective sense of purpose. Recording audio with Adobe Presenter 7. Importing lecture notes with Adobe Presenter 7. Adjusting settings with Adobe Presenter 7. Stop recording. Click Save. Now, let's go back to slide two and listen to our recording. Select Record in the audio part of the menu. Click Skip. To listen to a recorded slide, click the play button. Organizational behavior is the study of what people think, feel, and do in and around organizations. Organizations are groups of people who work interdependently towards some purpose. They are collective entities with a collective sense of purpose. You notice it automatically advanced to the next slide. If for some reason you were not satisfied with your recording, you could just record over it again. Let's play back this slide. Recording audio with Adobe Presenter 7. Importing lecture notes with Adobe Presenter 7. Adjusting settings with Adobe Presenter 7. Notice that I can click the pause button. 
or continue playing. You can include the text of your lecture in your presentation. Select the sync icon in the audio part of the ribbon. Click on the show script icon I'm going to advance to the slide where I will need to enter my text. Click in the text window to get an insertion point. You can either type the script directly into the text window or copy and paste. I copied this text from a Word document and now I will paste it into the text window using the keyboard command Control V. Now click on the Update button. In the Export Scripts dialog, click OK. Advance to the final frame. Now that we're at the end, I can click Save and Close. In order to view your work, click on the Preview icon. Presenter will build a preview. It takes a minute. And this is an interactive functioning preview that you can click through. Here we go. Slide one, slide two, slide three. There's the material I just typed in. You can also, and now it's playing, I'll stop it. You have your outline pane with your individual slides and your notes pane. Well, now that the content is completed, the presentation needs to be prepared for use in Blackboard. We'll go through some of the final steps to adjust the settings and prepare the presentation for publication. And finally, upload the interactive presentation to Blackboard. Select the theme icon in the ribbon. In the theme editor, make sure all of the checkboxes are unchecked except for show sidebar. And in the panes area, we want outline and notes to be checked. The default setting is outline. Click OK. In the tools area, Select the Settings icon. Type in Online Learning at Indiana Tech. There's an area provided for a summary. Click OK. Now in the Tools area, select the Slide Manager icon. In the Slide Manager, select All. Click on the Edit button. Make sure it is set for Advanced by User. OK. And click OK. In the Presentation area of the taskbar, select the Publish icon. In the Publish Presentation dialog box, there are three tabs. Click on My Computer. Click the Choose button to browse to where you want to save the file. I will save mine to the desktop. In the Output Options, check the Zip Package checkbox under the Output Options. Click Publish. And that's it. You've completed the work in the PowerPoint application for the current lecture presentation. Repeat the steps in this section if you have more presentations to publish. Now all we have to do is go through the final steps to upload the presentation to Blackboard. We will go through the steps to create a folder in Blackboard, upload the package to the folder in Blackboard, and finally, configure the settings in Blackboard. Now, a word of warning here. Each PowerPoint presentation has almost identical elements, and in each folder, 
the files and folders are named the same. For this reason, it's extremely important that when you name the folder, you should use a very distinguishable name, otherwise you may have a hard time locating the right folder later. In Blackboard, select Files from the Control Panel in the Course Management area. Click the Current Course. Click on the Create Folder button. Enter a name for the folder. Click on the Submit button. Click on the link to the newly created folder and open it. Next, click on the Upload button and select Upload Package. Click the Browse button. Locate the package file on your computer. Click on the Submit button. A successful upload will create files and folders that look like this. Pay attention to the index.htm file. This is the file we will be using later. Go to the place where you want to include the lecture presentation, for example, Module 1, Lectures, Click on Build Content, and then select Item from the Create category. In the Create Item dialog box, under Number 1, Content Information, enter a name in the text field. In Section Number 2, Attachments, Click on the Browse Course button. Click on the link. Now, locate the index.htm file in the Select File or Folder page. Click in the checkbox to select that item. Do not click on the hyperlink. Click the Submit button, and you will return to the Create Item page. In section number two, Attachments, you will see three options. Check the first option. In section number three, Options, permit users to view this content, yes. Track number of views, select no. You can enter your date and time restrictions here. Click on the Submit button to complete this task. Now, the last thing to do is to change the name of the file link. For each presenter lecture that you upload, there will be a file named index.htm. You will need to change the name of the index.htm to match the chapter lecture. Go to the Module Lectures folder where you just created a lecture presentation. Module 2, Module 2 Lectures. This is the index.htm file. Click on the downward pointing double chevron and select Edit. This will take you to the Edit Item page. Scrolling down to Section 2, Attachments, we see these boxes that says File Name and Link Title. These are the actual files, and this is the name of the link. We will change index.htm to Chapter 5 Lecture.
choose Submit. Now the index.htm file has been changed to Chapter 5 Lecture to reflect the appropriate name. So that was a lot of material to go through. Let's take a minute and review. We just went through the steps to record and edit audio narrations in PowerPoint, adjust the presentation settings in the Theme Editor and Slide Manager, publish the presentation from PowerPoint, and upload the presentation to a course in Blackboard. If you have any questions or problems using Adobe Presenter 7, please contact the Distance Education Office or email us 